Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline, prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Why does someone experience caffeine withdrawals? They actually get changes in blood flow. So what's caffeine doing? Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline from your adrenals, these two little marble-sized glands above your kidneys. That tends to activate the so-called sympathetic nervous system, make you a little bit more prone to move, um, bring some alertness to your body, if you, so to speak. And then you simultaneously, it's causing the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine from this little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus that we talked about before. So the brain is being hosed with a little bit of epinephrine as we speak right now. In addition, it's triggering a, a dopamine increase, but not by triggering the release of dopamine directly. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. So whatever dopamine is floating around in your system and my system, the caffeine is amplifying that effect. Not necessarily in, by making it a longer effect, by making the intensity a little bit higher. The other thing that um, caffeine does, and this is perhaps the most important one, is that it effectively prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that you are awake. And then when you sleep, adenosine gets pushed back down to a minimal level. Adenosine essentially is a readout of fatigue overall. So if we were to stay up for two days, the adenosine levels would be very high. So in terms of a practical tool, I do try and restrict my caffeine intake, or at least most of it, to the early part of the day. I'll stop drinking caffeine, sometimes, usually around 3 or 4 p.m. I don't drink any high amount of caffeine after 4 p.m. and generally not coffee. But when you wake up in the morning, depending on how well and how long you slept, your levels of adenosine might be zeroed out and you feel really alert, or you might have a, a small amount of adenosine hanging around. If you drink caffeine right away, what happens is caffeine acts as what's called a competitive, uh, it, it, well, let, let's just keep it simple. It essentially binds to the receptor that, that adenosine would normally it's occupy. It's an antagonist. It, it's, it's a functionally, it's an antagonist, but it's what we call a competitive agonist because it binds, it binds, so it's an agonist, but it, it out-competes the adenosine so the adenosine can't dock at those receptors. So that's great because you start to wake up, but then around two or 3 p.m., as that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. So one way that you can avoid the, the afternoon crash, or at least uh, offset uh, quite a bit of it, is to wait 90 to 120 minutes after you wake up to ingest any caffeine. And so adenosine uh, lowers. Adenosine will continue to be cleared from your system in the early mm -hmm. part of the day. Why does someone experience caffeine withdrawals? when they stop having coffee? Great question. Uh, two, uh, two main reasons. One is that caffeine, ha because of its effects on adenosine and because of adenosine's relationship to uh, the way that nerve cells connect to, vas to the vasculature, to blood vessels and capillaries, that when they stop drinking caffeine, they actually get changes in blood flow and they get headaches. And so you're, you're either hyper perfusing the brain and, and head. And let, so there's there's a compartment in which uh, below, between the brain and skull sort of, I don't want to get too, too into details, called the meninges. And it's very heavily vascularized. Your brain is very heavily vascularized. And it it's sort of tricky for chronic caffeine users. The blood vessels are actually dilate when they, people drink caffeine because they're caffeine adapted. For people that are not caffeine adapted and just have a cup of coffee and they never drink uh, caffeine, the blood vessels constrict. And that's because of the way that adenosine and these systems uh, tend to regulate themselves over time. So if you've been drinking a lot of caffeine and you stop, you can get pretty brutal caffeine headaches because of the changes in blood flow to your brain. And that takes a little bit of time. And generally, yeah, and, you, and generally tapering by mixing decaf with calf and then, um, you know, tapering off. Some people also find that they do much better drinking things like yerba mate tea. I'm a big fan of yerba mate. I don't have any relationship to mate company. I am Argentine, half my family. But um, and just to mention, because you, you're you're you and your listeners um, will know some of them will know this. That there are some claims that yerba mate can cause mouth mouth cancers and things of that sort. It, generally, you want to avoid the really smoky or toasted yerba mates. There's some pure leaf mates out there. There's some little organic farms that make them. I, I don't have any relationship to them, but there's one I found on Amazon. It's called Anna Park. I don't know who Anna is or where her park is, but or if she's even a person. But that's a very like clean, nice tasting mate, loose leaf mate. 
the, the ones that are really toasty or really um, smoked, they have a lot of preservatives in Do them. Do you like the the flavor or is there something in it? Yes, a couple of reasons. One, that the caffeine is is um, a little bit lower level than in coffee. I love the flavor as long as it's not the toasted ones. I don't like smoky anything. I am smoke anything. It's just kind of doesn't work for me. Um, the other reason is it has a, a lot of a compound called GLP-1 glucagon-like peptide one. Glucagon-like peptide one is very interesting. It's in, um, I think it's approved now, but it was in clinical trials for the treatment of obesity and diabetes. Suppresses appetite. Suppresses appetite in a major way and also leads to more lipolysis, especially under conditions of, of caloric deficit. So it's it's a kind of a fat burner, if you will. Um, of course, caloric deficit is required for net fat loss, et cetera. Uh, I don't want to get the calories in, calories out mafia after me. Uh, that already happened. You know, <laughs> yeah, they, they got to Yeah, they come after you with, um, with, uh, with nothing, but they come after you nonetheless. Um, it, and and they're right, right? Calories in, calories out is kind of the foundational principle of weight loss, maintenance, 